problems, worries, sadness. Are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. I come from a, a broken family. My parents were divorced when I was four. I was born Catholic and always raised Catholic, but as the years went by, I became sort of more Catholic. I grew up in a house with four girls, and so I was the second of four um, girls. And Luke comes from five boys, so we had very different upbringings. As I had a, a conversion at World Youth Day when I was a little bit older, when I turned 16, I started to really, you know, grow in my love of the Lord and in my faith, and and I, I just naturally thought about a vocation to the priesthood, uh, and so when I was my senior year in high school, I got in touch with the Companions of the Cross. I went through all my preliminary interviews, and but I was still a senior in high school, and so I. I asked, you know, what's the next step? And they said, you know what? You've been accepted to the John Paul II Bible School, so go and spend a year there. And just grow in your in relationship with the Lord, stay in touch with us. And when that year's over, you know, we'd, we'd welcome you to complete your application and to join us. Well, I think maybe when I was about 16, my cousin introduced me to the John Paul II Bible School. And I was like, oh, that sounds really great. I think I would like to do that. And so that was kind of like my goal, was to finish high school and then go to this John Paul II Bible School. It was seemed very interesting to me and something that was something I would really want to do. So I went um, there to the John Paul II Bible School and then the next year they had asked me to stay on staff um, and um, work in the bookstore. I was spending time in the in the bookstore um, because the, the bookstore lady was a, a very lovely lady. I spent um, an inordinate amount of time in the bookstore, mostly not buying things, but reading all the books and finding excuses to be in there. Uh, and so that relationship and that dynamic um, stopped me from going back to the Companions of the Cross. Obviously, my, my, my heart was starting to change and I was starting to feel, feel a draw towards marriage that I hadn't really thought about a lot before. I remember often throughout the year, Luke would come into the bookstore and he would just like lounge around. He would read the stories or look at the or read the books and look at the trinkets. And sometimes he would even just like come in there and like go in the corner of the bookstore and like fall asleep and like sit there like sleeping in the bookstore. And I just thought that was just such a funny thing that he would do that. Um, and so we became friends. Like we, we were good friends in our conversations that he just wanted to serve the Lord. And that really drew me to him. The next year after being a student at the Bible school, I worked together with Rosemary at the Bible school. And that year I uh, became interested in her and she a little less interested in me, I think. On graduation day, her parents came up and her dad uh, gave me his blessing to, to court his daughter. And so we spent the next uh, six months uh, dating or courting. So that's how we started in our relationship. And then we we dated for about six months. Um, and halfway through that, I, I had, that's, cause he would, like Luke was ready to marry me like right now. And I was just like, I would always be like, I don't know if I'm gonna marry you. Eight months later, we were married and we had a beautiful wedding with a lot of people, beautiful family and friends to witness. And it was just, it was a really beautiful and joyful day that the Lord really blessed us. He's just, again, as I said before, he's just always blessed us so much. Because I grew up in such a, a broken family, I'd never really had any thoughts about whether I would have a big family or a small family or any family at all when I was young. A thing in my heart always is that I wanted to have a big family. I remember when we found out 
that I was pregnant. And like, as I said, I always wanted to have kids, but it was so overwhelming. And I was also feeling unwell, obviously, first time mom and baby and pregnant, and you're just feeling sick and all the time, but, and you have high emotion, right? So I was high emotion and I'm just like crying and I'm like, oh, what did I get myself into? And yet I always wanted to do this. I always wanted to have a big family. The day before our very first anniversary, our first daughter was born. Um, her name is Rebecca Ann. And she's now 13 years old, so I'm starting to feel old. I have a teenager. Uh, and she is beautiful. I remember when she was born, just a, a little, little, little ball on my chest and holding her and just saying, you know, I love you, princess. Oh, you're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. And this was hours after she was born. And she loves reading. She is always just finding a new book to read. She is organized, she's responsible. She helps out so much around the house with all the kids. And anytime I ask her to do something, she just gets it done. To this day, she's just such a beautiful woman of the Lord. She just loves the Lord so much. My next daughter's Miriam. She was born 17 months later. She's very lively. She loves to be with her friends um, and she's a lot of fun. She's also a responsible young lady. She's currently 11. She's just a very energetic person, but she's also very calm and um, very caring. She She's always watching out for the children and making sure everyone is, you know, doing, behaving the way they should be behaving. And she's just very good at um, protecting people and, and loving everyone. Leah Jane is our third daughter and she is nine. I call her my little miracle baby because I had a miscarriage before her and after her. She wants to be a mom and for as long as I can remember, she's always said, you know, when we ask, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? She's always just said a mom. And she's the one who, you know, who said, I want to have all of the babies. Um, she has a mother's heart, very much like her own mother. Sophia is seven years old. She's our fourth daughter. She really wants people to, um, to be taken care of. And she's a really loving young girl. The one thing I know about her is she always knows what's going on around the house. If you want to know any information, you go talk to Sophia because she knows what has happened with all of the children. She knows who's done what and where things are and who left this there. And, and she's just very good that way. We had our first boy. His name is Eli Luke, and um, he's a lot of fun. He takes life very seriously. He loves to build anything that involves tools. Uh, he's he's all into most his most of his games are either working, uh, so he'll take on his papers and do and do paperwork like Dad, or he'll take on his tools and build something. Um, that's what what he really loves to do. He really really enjoys playing math, and he takes it very seriously. And he just he really loves the Lord, and so that's beautiful to see that. Phoebe Adele is three and she's our sixth baby. She's a very joyful girl and she likes to get out and um, be a part of the outside world too. Everyone loves her and she loves being a part of the big group. Johanna Grace was born two years ago and when she was born, she was born stillbirth. So she, she died about four hours before um, she was born in my womb. She was a very active baby in my womb. So it was quite shocking to find out that she wasn't alive. Gideon Paul is our um, seventh baby at this time. He is um, 10 months old. He's very happy, smiling often. Um, right now, as he likes to go on adventures with his older siblings and see where they will take him. And he just really likes a little adventure at this time.
So thinking about um, having a large family and, and what I think about it, I guess. Now, I am so blessed to have been able to receive all the children that I've received from the Lord at this point. And I look forward to all the children that hopefully God will give, give us in the future. It's really a joy. Like each and every child is a unique joy and none of them are the same. And that's really been a blessing. And we're really, you know, it's fun. It's fun to have a lot of people and to meet these people and to see who they're gonna become. You know, to be joyfully big is a really amazing thing. I. I don't even think of our family as being particularly big. Uh, and he'll often look around and think, you know, I feel like a child is missing. And then you start to think, you know, I wonder who God is gonna give us next. And I wonder what, what joy they're gonna bring to our family. Prayer has always been a part of both of our lives individually and as a family. Lately, we've been praying the Liturgy of the Hours, particularly morning prayer um, with our children every morning. Now that we have a few children that can read and, and really follow along, um, it's, it's been great. The younger ones particularly like the song because it's a part that they can participate in. But it helps the kids even just in daily life to um, learn to read chorally, like together. So it goes even beyond the faith, right? But it's it's a beautiful prayer and our family has really loved it. We've also like, when it comes time for the intentions, we all, we, we do the intentions and then everybody gets to go around the circle and everyone gets to pray their intention and what they have on their heart. And it's beautiful to see what the children come up with. They often pray for the church and the souls in purgatory and the babies who are aborted. And, you know, it's amazing that, um, you know, our little Phoebe, she prays for her little sister, Johanna, often. And they all have their little prayer intentions that changes. Um, but that's one thing that everyone participates in and they all really enjoy that. It's been a, a really neat experience for us. Um, you know, often, of course, we'll go to daily mass. Um, we try and pray the rosary every Sunday as a family. We try all sorts of, of normal liturgical prayers that, you know, most Catholics will pray, but just to give our, our children a flavor of it. Uh, and then just extemporaneous prayer, asking them uh, on their birthdays. We'll, we'll take the birthday child and they get to sit in the middle and everyone has a chance to lay hands on them and to just pray um, whatever is on their heart for, for that sibling or for mom or for dad. Um, and that's a really, a, always a really special little mm -hmm. birthday tradition uh, in our house. And we usually do those prayers in the evening. Um, like that's kind of our night prayer before bedtime. That's something that we, like that, as Luke was saying, all those different things, that's what we do kind of at night prayer. Um, because we homeschool, we have a special opportunity to, um, like sometimes Luke is able to come with us for daily mass and sometimes he's not, but the children and I will go. And if we can't make mass, we'll just go and make um, a spiritual communion at the church and do a visit to the Blessed Sacrament. Um, so the kids really love that. We'll just do the daily readings. Um, sometimes we'll talk about the readings and do a little reflection there um, if we're the only ones in the chapel and we have the opportunity to do that. The children and I also during the day, we do um, like a spiritual reading. Um, after lunch usually, uh, and we either do like a story of a saint or reading from the Bible, or there's like um, moral stories, like just little short stories that have a moral story to them. So we read those after lunch and the kids really enjoy all of that. We try to incorporate a lot of different things so that our children um, see you know, a few years ago, we did the consecration to Mary, you know, and we randomly do novenas and, yeah, um, we've just really, uh, I think, seen the value in our own lives of, of a variety of prayer being really fruitful in our spiritual life. And so we just want to share that with our children. And the other thing that we do is every night, each child has a specific person they pray for. So it changes as time goes for whoever needs our prayers, but they pray for one specific name in the intentions at night. So that's kind of a, a neat thing that they get to, to be a part of. And it's a way to really bless um, the world with our prayers.
Finances can definitely be a challenge when you're raising a large family. Kids are obviously fairly expensive. Um, and I worked in ministry for the first 12 years of our marriage. And so money was often uh, very tight. And God really, I think, gave us the grace to, to trust him in that, although uh, there was not any lack of a sort of fear of, of, of would we be provided for, but God always always came through. He always took care of us. It was just a way that God provided for us. And it, it, it's always stuck with me to remind me that God always provides, even the little things like, one time I was like, oh, they need a new sweater. And then all of a sudden a bag of clothes got dropped at the door. And then there was a sweater in the bag. And I thought, okay, this is perfect, you know? And I didn't even need to worry about it, but yet I was, because I was like, oh, we got to go get a new sweater. And even just the trouble of going out to the store, but then it was just dropped at the door. It was amazing. We also have a daughter who would be two years old right now. Um, her name is Johanna Grace, and uh, she passed away as a stillborn. So she died sometime while my wife was in labor. And so we didn't know um, she was going to be stillborn until she was born and, uh, and wasn't breathing. Um, and that was a really, a really tough thing to go through. It, it really grieved our hearts. I mean, I, I can't think of a thing um, in my life that's been harder than to, than to bury my daughter. I just remember thinking how blessed I was that um, God had given me a faith um, to believe in Him and to trust in Him. And I remember when I was holding her, she was passed away, and I just I said, "What what can we do?" And you know, and there wasn't really anything we could do. And it was just time to hold her. And I just I remember saying, "The Lord gives and the Lord takes away," right in that moment, and just being so thankful that I could just trust the Lord with her life and with our life. And, you know, it didn't take away the pain and it didn't take away the suffering. And my faith, God didn't do any of that, you know. But um, through all of it, I could still see God's grace and the way he blessed us. My wife and I realized that we needed to um, either turn our backs on the Lord or turn towards the Lord in, you know, in our grief. Um, and we really very consciously chose, you know, we just need to, we need to give this to the Lord. We need to accept this as, as being his will for us and, um, and love him in it and allow him to love us through this. Her funeral was attended by quite a number of our friends and family. And we were really blessed to be surrounded by that kind of support and to just to see the witness that her life, um, even though her entire life was lived in my wife's womb, to see the witness that she was able to have on so many people. The first reading at her funeral was, was from Job, you know, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's what we had written on her tombstone, you know, in Johanna Grace, the date of her birth, and blessed be the name of the Lord. And that's really sort of been our prayer through, through all of it is, you know, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, it's not something I would wish on anyone. It's not something I want to go through again. All of the blessings that God gave in the midst of the pain and the suffering and how my children have come to accept this suffering. And yet also how joyful when we said we were expecting another baby, our Gideon, Paul, how joyful they were. Like all of them were just so excited to be having another child. And all of my children, even though you know, our life comes with a lot of work, you know, when you have a big family, there's lots of work, there's lots of suffering, there's lots of people to take care of. And we're always all working together and working out all this detail of a big house and a big family and and trying to get everything worked out. And, um, and yet, even though they have to do so much to be a part of a big family, they still want more. They want more children and they're always so excited and accepting of having more kids. So that makes me so happy to know that even though we went through this pain and this suffering of a child being lost, they're still so happy and joyful to have more children. And I just can't wait to see what God does with our family. And, um, you know, I just hope that he'll bless us with more. But whatever God's plan is, you know, I just trust in His will. And I'm just so thankful for my faith 
that um, that we know the Lord, that our family is is walking with the Lord um, to get through these times of suffering and and to join in the joy of the Lord. We've never really put a number on, you know, we want to have four kids, or we want to have six kids, or we want to have eight kids or 10 kids or 15 kids. Um, we've just always sort of been open to to God's will and he'll give us the, the correct amount of children. We're very blessed to have each and every child that we have and we really enjoy them. They're all, you know, such a thrill, such a blessing. Um, and so God will give us as many children as God will give us and, and we'll receive them with love. encouraged by what I've seen of Shalom Media and the uh, sorts of events that they promote uh, across Canada. We hear our Holy Father speaking often about a new evangelization for today's world. That is going to call for media, modern media, to be involved in spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. So we ask the Lord to bless Shalom Media and all of your efforts to bring the good news into homes, into people's lives. Amen.